Welcome to another episode of the Solo Wargaming Show. Uh, today we're going to be looking at building a German concrete bunker. And I've actually done a bunker before. It was a uh, Japanese bunker, the kind you would have saw in uh, the islands. Uh, which I'm not sure if I've actually shown on the channel. It's on my Tumblr, but uh, I'll show that uh, when I get a chance. Today we're going to be building a German bunker. And basically I've had an idea to do one of these for a while. And these are the kind you've see, seen on the Atlantic Wall. Now, I don't know what this particular bunker is called. But it's the type that's usually a square or a block. And it has kind of the uh, the half triangular arms extending out from it. Basically creating a kill zone in front of the bunker. Uh, and I had tried to look at a lot of commercial kits. There, there really aren't any that I could find. I think... Uh, I think Warlord Games does some bunkers, uh, but I think they're square, uh, you know, and, and the kits aren't cheap, so, uh, I also tried going online to see if people had done this and built some, I really didn't have much luck with that, so I decided to do it myself, and, uh, this is kind of my result, and I'm actually quite pleased with how it came out, I don't know why it took me so long. But when I finally made up my mind to do it a weekend ago, this is uh, how it came out. And it actually wasn't that difficult. So let's take a look uh, at the first steps. Now the first thing I did was I tried to give you a list of supplies I used, which is essentially some dollar store foam circles. The kind that they use for planting or if you go to the, like the uh, plant area in most dollar stores. Some MDF board. I actually bought this MDF board at Walmart. I just basically bought a uh, clipboard, and then I cut off the, the metal clip. So, it's, you know, I don't know how much MDF board costs normally or where you get it at, but this was about, I think they're like fifty at Walmart. Some white glue. I bought the Elmer's white glue, you know, the stronger version. Uh, there is one that says extra strong, so I would recommend getting that. Uh, some craft bricks. I don't know the, the commercial name of these, but Hobby Lobby, I know, sells them in a big old box. And I've had these things forever. I think I got them at a thrift store. But these are excellent because you can actually cut these with a hobby knife into the proper shape to, to fill out the circles. So that's going to be important. Uh, some white spackle. Again, this is what I got at the dollar store, just in a, a, a cheap brush. And then some paint, obviously, for the end. Now, the first photo here just kind of shows the, uh, the dry fit of everything. And what I did was, and it'll show a little bit better here, is I took the, 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 the two circular uh, foam pieces from the uh, dollar store, and I basically sandwiched some of the bricks in between there. And that's where I cut the bricks. So I cut them at angles so that they would they would line up like that. And then I basically laid out a wall of the bricks on either end to create the arms. Now at the very top of this, which shows up better in here, I actually have a little wooden circle I got at Michael's. You don't have to put that there. I just bought it there. Basically it makes the lid easier to lift off. And I bought it there because I, I like the way the appearance that it gives more of the bunker. It's not, you know, it doesn't look just so so round. Uh, this is a view of the back of the bunker, and again, that's a piece of MDF board. I built up these back walls, again, using those bricks, and I basically layered and mortared them with the glue. I mean, that's just about as simple as I can explain that. Uh, and this is kind of a, a long view of everything when it's completed. I would recommend doing a dry fit, because some of the bricks are different sizes and widths, and... You know, it could be a little difficult if you get in there and glue a brick down and it's too large and you have, you know, real large gaps. So I would recommend a dry fit. I laid out all of the bricks I was going to use after I did my dry fit. This is another view from the front of the bunker showing you that last big brick in the middle. If you can see where, like, the gun port would be, I actually cut that brick in half and then laid it. So that's something you might want to do to create that space. And it, it might not show up in this image, but also I hollowed out the top of my uh, roof section 
to make sure I could get some figures in there and they could stand up. So you do want to fit that because normally otherwise you wouldn't be able to get anything in there. And if you like, if you like to put them in there like I do, then you'd want to do that. So that'll take us to step two. Step two is now you want to make sure that the glue is totally dry. I, I left mine to dry overnight. And the reason is when you go to, to brush on the white spackle, you don't want the bricks coming apart. And I did have a few that slid out of place as I was brushing on the spackle. So, you know, make sure they're as dry as you can get them. But then essentially what you're going to do with that is you're going to take a, a small paintbrush, basically just paint the spackle over everything. I mean, I even did the base to get some texture, but I especially did... Uh, in between the bricks and things as you can see here it's gonna make your it's gonna make your build stronger and it's also gonna give more of the appearance of concrete which is what you wanna have so as you can see here these bricks I kinda gave a frosted effect but all over I put as much spackle as it would take uh, you know and to create the effect I wanted uh, to cover it and so these are just some other pictures of me spackling just about I think I spackled just about everything, even the inside. This is the front, and you can kind of see that some of the spackle globbed up in the corners there. And what I basically did was, you know, a little bit before it was dry, I mean, because that, that, that did not dry as quick as everything else, I just took a brush and kind of wiped that out. And it, it came out pretty well. All right, here's another view of the front. And then step three... Step three is simply you're going to start uh, painting it. Now I did a, I did I used a uh, spray can, and I, I sprayed it all black as my initial paint step, and that's another reason you want to put the spackle over as much as you can because if you leave some of the material exposed, the foam as well as some of these bricks could get melted by the spray can. But I had no problem with that. So I sprayed it black. I let the black dry. And I went back over it with a gray. Okay. Now, gray paint is not concrete paint. So after I used the gray, I went back over the gray with some uh, stone stone color. I think it's by, uh, it's by uh, Reaper. I think uh, there's a few others that sell what, what are called stone. And that was that gave me the final color. And then I did a dry brush of white. And pretty much that was it. I mean, I think the base, I might have painted with some uh, flat earth and another dry brush. And uh, that was the completed model. I mean, it was very easy, very quick, other than, you know, waiting for it to dry. And these are just some shots of uh, the completed bunker being inspected by the field marshal. So I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, Take care. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe.